Hello and welcome to the Immaterial Gamers Live Podcast, episode 135. We have me at the top left, for the people that can't see it right now. Then we have Danny, over, well, over that way, kind of, that way. Or D, and then right below me is Ryan, our trusty leader and cult leader. Welcome everyone to the cult of Immateria. We all follow the god Immaterium. And then uh, we will get our we will get our own spaceship and we'll end up on Mars. But as for last week with uh, Ryan losing power, he has this trusty candle to keep him powered in the background there. Yeah, it's 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 very warm. It's very warm. Well, it's only a little candle. It's bigger than you, but it's only a little one. Yeah, it could be pumping it's up there. gas. Stock video footage of a royalty free, free to use, zero attribution required. Footage of one candle. On a loop. I would laugh if there was. On a loop. I would laugh if there was royalties on it. <laughs> Somebody's getting paid nope, for it. Nope. I I made sure they were the the site that I got it from, which I think I still have the tab open. Give me one moment. Uh, no, I don't. That's a shame. Like Vixials or something like that. But it, yeah, it was it was free. D's a pirate. And O D. Uh, he's trying to be a pirate all yeah, right for the, yeah for the for the benefit of the audience uh, if you are listening to this after the fact on all the uh audio, audio only versions, stations wherever your podcast is served or just thrown there then uh yeah yeah d is d has basically become i there's a, there's a there's a film or something where someone's like sunglasses get shot out something like that I don't remember anymore. So uh, yeah, uh, how's how's it been going this week, everyone? Ah, pretty good, pretty good. Mm-hmm. I we'll go our normal top left to bottom right. So seeing yep. as I'm on the top left, I guess I get to start for once. I don't know why I'm at yeah. the top left. I never been top left. I don't know what's going on. That's because that's because usually Stefan's in front of you and it's in order. No, actually, how does that? I think it goes by I whoever don't. turns the camera on first. No, because huh. Danny's ahead of you now. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm on the top right, or top left. I know my left and rights. Don't worry. Um, so, <laughs> what we've been playing this week, we'll start with me. Uh, what did I play this week? Play a little bit of okay. Kerbal. Play a little bit of Kerbal Space Program. I- I'm attempting to remember how to play the game. There's some new stuff. And a random huh? person has appeared. Darius. Ah, okay. Oh, oh, I know wait, on, since he's now the top That's it. Yep, Darius has to be the starter whenever his camera turns on. He gets to say what he's been playing. Ha ha, I'm not first. See, I told you I'm never first. Stays true. Statement was true. Nope. Okay. Where are the camera? Just give me a second. One. Oh, what the hell? Now my camera died. Um, no, I still no, see you. There we go. Somehow my... On my own side, I have blocked my camera. <laughs> oh, uh, now they're both oh, there. Everyone's. Again, it's not the Immaterial Gamers podcast if there are not technical difficulties. Yeah, that was weird. So you'll see that on the live stream, for sure. Speaking of technical difficulties, Twitch didn't update that we've gone live, so while you keep talking about what you're doing, I'm going to put the go live message on Twitter. All and- right. So, we were just doing the... Uh, what we've played this week, and I was going to go first because I was top left, but now Darius is here, so he will go top first, or he'll go first. Well, I've been playing the Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Spider-Man, mm-hmm. Miles Morales. On the PS5, I'm assuming. Yes, it is. Because the last are, couple of, a couple episodes ago, you were had it on order, and you haven't been back since, so let's start with that. So it finally arrived. It's everything works. Uh, the game looks great. Uh, the new Dual Sense controller feels different. <laughs> I was about to say, how does it feel to have haptic feedback and not rumble? Um, I mean, to be honest, depends. you've used a smartphone for years, so haptic well, feedback should yeah. just be a a thing. But well, it's great for the um. 
depends how it, how it is implemented in, in the games. Mm. In Spider-Man, for example, the triggers are very subtle, subtle. You barely can feel the feedback on them. It is basically when he's swinging mm. and the web will snap. Mm. You, you should, you kind of should feel like your finger is going much more deeper, much more to the to the you know to the yeah. The button the should lose all pressure. Yeah, basically. Should, yeah, should lose the tension. Should lose the, the yes, exactly. Uh, and it's very very there, but it's definitely you can still notice it if you do not press it all the way down in the first place. Because if That's you press it neat. all the way down, then there is no feed bo- space left for the feedback for you. Mm. However, if you, I was playing the um, Astrobots um, demo, tech demo basically of mm. PlayStation Five, uh, and when you're holding a gun, an assault gun basically, you press, you press your finger just halfway through. And it will be just wiggle like that. That's uh, kind of cool. Because it's continuously firing. And yeah, you can just... Yeah, you get to it's feel... like that happening, but a little so... bit faster. <laughs> wow, so it's sort of react with you. Yeah, it was, right, wasn't, so, yeah, wasn't there a thing that, like a few you... months ago that was like... Um, no, certain games where if your weapon would jam, it would jam the triggers. Yes. Hmm. It That's... can, it kind of can happen. I don't think it can happen like in the down, in the bottom side mm-hmm. of it. Well, yeah, so I don't think the motors can jump on the top, so you will not be able to press it. Yeah, I, I can uh... see the motors not having enough power to push back against your finger, mm. but they can easily stop the movement. Yeah, like just not allow okay. movement. So yeah, that's one of the that's a cra- quite neat feature. However, it had to be implemented in the game. Yeah, that's really, the thing. It's really down good. to down to the developer, isn't it? When it comes to how they use it, so we'll see how long it lasts. I remember yeah. how how long Six Axis lasted. Not very long. I don't even know what Six Axis was. Um, it was basically motion sensitive. It was like gyroscopic controller oh, okay. for the DualShock Three. Um. Oh, Which you still like, have it. So you could sort of place the pad on its side and then sort of like tilt it and you could like control stuff like mazes and sort of vehicles like that, but only a few developers used it early on and then it was it went the way of the gimmick. Like connect and everything like that. It just yeah. sort of right, we've had fun with it. Um people just want to use analog sticks and trigger and play COD. So uh Yeah, so it's correct. <laughs> So yeah, I finished Miles Morales. I do have the platinum trophy on it. Oh. Uh, Stefan was present on the time when I was reaching the platinum. Mm. Ah, I would I would say viable. Um, there you go. You've got proof. But it's Steffi would probably just to dick you over. Just turn around and go. Nope. No, I didn't know. Uh, well, there is also a proof of you know. A, Trophy on my PlayStation Five account. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, that'll that'll that'll, that'll be true. <laughs> so yeah, well, that was a great game. I'm looking forward to something else to play on PlayStation Five. Mm. Just gotta wait for it to um, come out. Uh yeah, well, it kind of like waiting for something new to come out. However, I do considering like playing the old games as well. Especially if we're talking like God of War, where the uh, apparently they did adapt the triggers. So mm. yeah, that's that, that that might be fun because apparently if you are holding the shield, due to smash it, then something should happen to the trigger. Mm. So it might be just worth it for just this experience, isn't it? Mm. And. Hence, that was also my question last week to Ryan. Um, do you recommend playing Persona 5 as it is on the uh, PlayStation Plus thingy? Absolutely. If it's Oh, if it's on so, PlayStation Plus, yes. Definitely. Yeah. 
I don't have to, you know, pay extra for it. It's already there. Um, oh yeah, de definitely. I would. If you're like, you you, you like sort of turn-based RPGs and stuff like that. I mean, if you played any, I mean, not just Persona, but if you played anything from the Shin Megami Tensei franchise, Tensei sort of franchise and sub franchises, which I probably have not. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but they're very it's like they're very easy to learn, difficult to master games because they, regardless of whether they split off into the spin-offs like Persona has and other games, they still follow the same sort of like stuff of turn-based figuring out elemental weaknesses of your opponents while also making sure that you've your got eye. your defenses there so you don't get hit with the same stuff because they all seem to follow the idea of hit an enemy with a weakness and you gain an extra turn. But if they oh, hit okay. you for a weakness, they gain an extra turn or you lose turns and stuff like that. So they all follow that sort of tactical idea. And it's just that Persona 5 sort of mastered it in regards to the story and the style and everything that's there. So absolutely is the yeah, answer. I've also noticed there's a brand new Persona coming out right now, basically. Five. There, there is. Uh, Persona 5 Strikers, which I'll talk yes. about once we get round the, the group. Oh. Hey, okay. <laughs> Brian's been playing it. Yep, and I will I will cool, cool. talk about my experiences uh, on that. Yeah, that so. was me basically enjoying uh, our experience on PlayStation 5. Uh, one of the kind of mic, I think, overlooking, overlooked thing is I did get a bundle with camera. Uh, hoping that my girlfriend could play the Just Dance. Uh, right. And unfortunately, it's just a camera, camera, video camera for the online kind of thing. Uh -huh. So uh, that's a bit of the appointment. And also, the old camera, PlayStation 4, you cannot straight away connect it to the Five. PlayStation 5. Of course they wouldn't make it user friendly. You can get um a dongle. An adapter. <laughs> adapter. <Dungle. laughs> you can get an adapter for free if you do on PlayStation VR. I because the VR is also using the camera to track your movements, right? Yeah. Yeah, but if you do have your camera on its own, bad luck. You're you're out of luck. You gotta buy it buy it yourself. Yeah, you need to spend roughly extra twenty quid on twenty pounds on uh, eBay. No, because you cannot officially buy it anyway. Oh, they don't even sell of it. Course. So, yeah, exactly. They, you cannot order it from game or another store because they do not have it. You can only have it from directly from PlayStation website if you do have. Uh, yeah, uh, the VR, yes. So it's a little bit bollocks at the moment, but we'll see how everything develops in the next year or two. Yeah, mm. bad news. All right, so is that right, you? So... That was me. All right, yeah. so I'll go back to what I was saying. Um, basically, Kerbal. yeah, uh, I started doing a live stream for Kerbal. And yeah. I'm doing a practice because I don't remember how to play very well. So my live stream was a few hours long and the title was Attempting to Get to the Mun. And <laughs> I'm practicing because I want to play hard. There's a hard mode basically where you can't revert flights. Uh, if you lose a curveball, he's gone for good. And no, anybody. Jeb. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm doing a practice on an easier mode to see if I can just remember the basics of getting to space so that I don't just start on hard and send Jebediah out into an expedition and then he's stuck out in space. Because I really, as much as I love the game, I really don't want to have to go chasing him through space, spending all of my money just trying to get Jeb back. Because now the Kerbal's level and they get, as they have three different types there's a scientist there's a, an engineer and then there's a pilot mm. and the pilots obviously as they level they get better functions for being a pilot 
Like the first level allows you to unlock the SAS, which is a control module that will hold the craft straight. Yeah. Actually, I think they get that by default as a pilot. It'll just hold it straight. Then when they get to level one, they can go prograde or retrograde. And a quick terminology, prograde means following their current direction. So prograde is forward and retrograde is backwards. Um, they can't just say forward or backwards because you're dealing with orbits. You're dealing with circles. There's really no forward in a circle. Hmm. Um, so it's prograde and retrograde. Then as you level up, I haven't got him any higher levels, so I don't remember what he gets, but you'll get like, I know there's more. There's anti-normal and normal, which increases your orbit height or something like that. And then there's one to help change the direction of your orbit so you can yeah. rotate your orbit without increasing or decreasing your orbit height. Um, so yeah, basically I'm doing a live stream of that and you get to see me fail to get to the Mun. I didn't have enough fuel on my last launch and it was getting too late. And I talked on this one! I remembered yeah. to talk through the, the, the live stream this time. I find it very difficult to actually have a conversation with myself on the on Kerbal because it it's is a very slow moving game. It is a weird example. It may be something that's uh, maybe it's, uh, like it's one of those that could do with a co pilot. Yeah. Or even recorded ahead of time and then chopped into a shorter Where's video. Because mm. you don't. You could spend a good 20, 30 minutes just sitting there building a craft. So I I'm working on figuring out how to talk to myself and explain what I'm doing, especially. Uh, yeah. or my thoughts behind what I'm doing anyways, because it's not always going to work the way I think it's going to work. <laughs> I've learned that. Yeah so, yeah, so you could justify the actions that you think you've made. Yeah. But so far, I haven't had a curveball stuck in space. I haven't had to revert any flights. So I'm doing good for my hard mode. Um, good. Working on that. I do plan on doing a hard mode series. And yeah, it's going to be no reverting. No Kerbal's back, and it's going to be really fun. But I've also been playing World of Warcraft. And, yeah, that's a shocker. Almost getting to max level now, actually. I'm getting pretty close. I think I'm 57 now. Get you there, and then just and like just fling you into Torghast, and then just like, oh, there you go, have fun, bye. What's Torghast? I don't even know yet. <laughs> Torghast, the roguelike. Oh, that's dungeon. what, yeah, I've seen uh, you dungeon. doing that. Okay, that's what Torghast is. Yeah. That, that'll be uh, interesting. The good news is I got all level 60 gear that I've crafted myself for when I get oh, there. Oh, good, so you're, you're ready. I'll be ready for at least some basic stuff. Probably you do a lot are of... not prepared? Is, is that how it goes? Yeah, a lot of... I've, I've been told that by a lot of guys that I've already killed, so I'm prepared, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, One of those was the guy who told me I'm not prepared and uh, kind of stared at him and he fell over. Yeah. Granted, I was overleveled, but you know. <laughs> He's also got a trinket. Yeah, Danny made me the Dark Moon trinket. The healer Dark Moon trinket. The right one. Dark Moon trinkets are good. Oh, wait. Still actually was it the healer one or the, the DPS one? one? I don't remember. I made you the healing trinket. Okay, I couldn't remember if it was the healing one or the DPS one. But yeah. No, it's the healing trinket. Yes, for the, uh, the healing trinket. Over the, I had the DPS one ready. Yeah, me and Danny also played around in Black Temple yesterday, just because we could. Mm. We went through Black Temple. Mm. Yeah, there's a actually. time walk event this week for Burning Crusade. Yeah, that'll be going until... Well, we're Wednesday. live, aren't we? It'll be going until Wednesday. Yeah. Where it'll be replaced with other event. Yep. Yep. All uh, right. I bought, a, I bought a toy from um, the time Chat Wrath. Yeah, the yeah time from the Time Walking, walking Vendor for... The um, teleport killer critter teleports you to Black Temple. Yeah, we we he had a just a toy that gave us a portal to the Black Temple, so we said, why not? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> so sure. I want I want you to actually re do a run of Black Temple, but in the idea that you're doing it on one of those like house renovation shows. <laughs> what do you mean? You just you're you're just like you're you you're flipping this house. It just turns out the house is the Black Temple. 
Oh, so it's it's we got to get rid of all this and clean this <laughs> up and yeah, run away. Yeah. yeah, I mean, not only I mean, the old landlord is still squatting in the place. So and some of his tenants haven't left yet either. And we're well, well, we're gonna have to go through and clean out these rooms over here. And they left a mess in this room. And I mean, as you can see, the 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 lounge is pretty bloody big. But I mean, those gaudy purple drapes, you know. It... Yeah. And look at oh, the size of the, look at the look at the height of these roofs. You're gonna need uh, cranes in here to clean them. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, what Danny's been up to this week. Um, I've been playing with the other arts. I've been playing a game called Falheim. Ah, Norse, Norse, Norse. Yep, <laughs> I'm a Viking. Um, it's a survival crafty game where you've got to kill. A series of bosses to unlock the next boss and the next crafting area. Yeah, an open world, random generated world, um, crafty sort of survival building game. Uh, I believe yeah. the most evil thing in that are the trees. No. They definitely start out kind of mean. No, that's not bad. Werewolf, the fact that I got ripped apart by werewolves. And dragons earlier. That was, that was fun. I you see, yeah, they're they're scary in that sort of idea. But I'm I'm hearing nothing is scarier than dropping down a, or chopping down a tree and then watching it roll down and crush your village. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> yeah, that, that that happens. That happens quite a bit actually. Um, because you don't know which way the tree's gonna fall. Because it'll just chop it and it'll just fall whichever way it wants. Crunch. <laughs> Uh, just found out where the fourth boss is, the dragon boss, and we've built. I'm starting to build a wolf armor. What is the fourth level of armor? Cool. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the wearing wolf. Uh, so I've got an iron helmet, two pieces of wolf armor, and a lot's cape. So I can survive the frost area now. Oh, good. There's a frost Couple. area. Yeah, well, hold on. yeah. You're Norseman. Surely there should be a frost area. Yeah. Well, you got five. You start off in there's five zones. You start off in the meadows. What is zone one? Zone okay. two is the forest and the tree people mm. uh, and skelly bobs. They live there for some reason. Uh, <laughs> zone three is the swamp that live that has a uh, drow that try and um, fire things. Zone four is the yeah. mountain area, what has wolves introduces drakes and the werewolf. And oh, God, um, wolves and Canadian rappers, and sky golem uh, and stone golems that live up at the top of the mountains. Oh. Zone five is the plains. Goblins, lots and lots of goblins. Some kind of like big yak thing that rips you a new one, and death mosquitoes, mosquitoes that just like take tons of your health out. Death you can have like mosquito. 150. You have 150 health, you'll die in one hit. If it hits you. Don't just don't get head down. Yeah. But they are weak. Oh. Don't you uh, dark souls me. Uh, they are. <laughs> if you can hit them in if you can hit them with your mace, you can one shot them. Okay. Um but they're fast little gets and they're really hard. The goblins, you know when they're about because they giggle. You stay <laughs> like, I was about goblin. to say, do they, do they do they giggle like Japanese high school? children or do they giggle like the witch in the atmosphere board games you know <laughs> more like that okay more like that uh they just giggle and you can hear them giggling for ages and it's like no run away because we're not ready for them yet the planes is the hardest zone okay. so um but you can go between them willy-nilly and they can cross the borders as well so if you're on a plains and there's a meadow nearby, you're not safe. They'll just wander over. Never safe. And there's like Never blood moons and stuff that there's always an event that happens. Each time you're down a boss, you'll get then have a chance for that event to happen in your base. And they come running at you. Like we had trolls. They just came running out of the forest and non base. Ah, they have a forest troll. Yeah, forest trolls. Um and then we had a fire thing, so a whole bunch of fire imp things could set everything on fire. Huh. 
Fantastic. But yeah, you down the five bosses and then you mount the heads on the circle in the spawn area and you get a buff. Mm. Uh, the first boss gives you a speed boost. Second boss gives you mining speed. Third boss, I'm not sure what it gives. But yeah. You have to find the location sweet boss and so on and so forth. And if you're not geared, you will die. You have to plan out what you're going to do. You are not prepared? On boss 3 we went. We had to go back. We have to go back. Yeah, we all died and we had to rethink the strategy. Because third <sighs> boss is called Bone Mass. It's a giant swamp thing. Like purple is. Uh, no, no, but green. Like a giant green blob. Like a... It's a giant slime, effectively. Spews out poison, spews out minions, and does poison damage. Immune to phys- uh, immune to uh, arranged damage. So you have to melee hit it. So you so have to basically, have poison resist. Yeah, basically you have to get really close to it and not get poisoned and not get hit. And survive so... the minions. It's so, you've got to survive the waves of minions. Like waves and waves of minions. Don't get poisoned to death and run away, and try and heal yourself up in the process. It took me, Chris, and Matt about an hour. The second time round, and like six respawns later, because we have to keep tightening and tanking it. It also heals itself over time, like the other bosses so far. It just slowly sat there healing. I'm like, no. Super die. happy fun times. Yep. Super happy fun times. But yeah, that gives us a wishbone that allows us to find silver in the mountains and hidden objects. Did you snap it? Did you snap the wishbone? No. They but need the wishbone. Like a... It's their safety net. It's, it, it's a dividing rod. Like, loot that way. <laughs> Literally. So, well, while you were there, you were talking about the forest troll. Uh, Steph's modding and, and in the chat. And uh, he, he well found a, an emote of an orc, which... Um, it's a one-eyed orc by the looks of it. Yeah, uh, I guess it's the closest thing to a troll we can get. Uh, otherwise, we're going to look at someone's Twitter feed. And then we'll find plenty of trolls there. But then he's like, there's no. a troll in the forest. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were... A troll in the tree. In the tree. One tree. It can't be a forest, but it's a single tree. No, but it's now, so... of course, that troll like decides he wants to be a troll and knocks that one tree down, knowing that he villages down the hill. In the dungeon. That's Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah. And also, he thought you ought to know. There's a troll in the dungeon. I what thought you ought to know. know. <laughs> Fester Quirrell. Uh, indeed. Uh, what was it? But yeah, the troll actually. Troll's weapon is a freaking tree. A big mass. He just pulls a tree up and starts swinging it. Uh, like, no. Yeah, no, no, no. It's like, Troll's like yay big. Full size tree. Has a swing about that big. Your character's about this big. Yay. Wow. Ow. Ow. Run away. So that's you and your Valheim. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, uh, so maybe we should do- delve quickly into the story of why Stefan's not here. Oh yeah, yeah, he broke his butt. Yeah, his, bro- <laughs> his butt is broken. As it, well, to be... To be uh, if he had an incident involving a loft ladder and a loft. He's He's fine, he's just hurt. Yeah. But it's just it was just nice to like come onto the computer this morning to upload the persona video for today and just seeing in the status in Discord it just says broken me bum. And... There was a, there was another little light like, emote and I don't know if it was a ladder or something. It just But he nearly became Stefan on a stick. <laughs> on a stick. He'll always be Stefan on a stick. He will. All right, now now on to what Chiz has been playing. Yeah, so uh, I've been playing Persona Five Strikers. 
Um, so surprise, Darius. So, you, so you're aware. I have to try and keep this now plot light because Persona Play Five it. Strikers is a direct sequel to Persona Five. Okay. And Persona 5 Royal. Um, you don't need to have played Persona 5 to play Strikers because with the way that the storyline works, they'll catch you up on all the sort it gives of you the information mechanic. when you need it. Yeah, mm -hmm. good ball, bit of exposition, and there is a sort of a like an audience surrogate in the form of an AI called Sophia uh. who um sort of asks what the main characters, the Phantom Thieves, had done previously and why they know how to do what they do in this but in this in the same way of the yakuza games turning from a sort of brawling game to a turn-based rpg strikers has gone from a turn-based rpg to a musu game i.e dynasty warriors samurai warriors x warriors mm-hmm um, or have they more more recently been doing because the Dynasty Warriors games? Well, you can only tell the, the the romance of the Three Kingdoms so many times. In the case of, um, in the case of the Dynasty Warriors franchise, they've told it nine times. Mm. Um, the Yellow Rebellion and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's it's yeah, and it's exactly the same storyline. It's just that they change little bits as they've learned more, and you know. So like Lee Bay did this. No, Cow Cow did this. It's like... Yeah, it's, yeah. And but the like there is no real difference in the storyline. You know, Dynasty Warrior 3 will tell you Blue Bay did this and Cow Cow did this. And then maybe down the line in, in Dynasty Warrior 6 they just start to use the Japanese inflections of the names. Mm. So it'll be Lu Bay Liu Bay did this and Sao Sao did this. Yeah. Um you know, and then, then they didn't pay the English voice actors, so it was Japanese only for a while. But um, what they've been doing more, Omega Force, have been doing licensed games instead. So they've done one based on Arslan and Berserk and sort of other franchised games. And most recently, they've worked with Sega and Peace Studio. Sega! So they now have, yeah, they now have a button mashing game set in the Persona universe mm. with all its quirks and flaws from there. Basically, so the... it's worked completely different to the other ones, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 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 weird. Yeah, you, well, so... you've been getting um, thinking by it. Yeah, I've been sort of getting like, huh? What's going on? Because here's then... the thing. When you say Musu game, you expect giant battlefields Hundreds and thousands of just guys just stood there and their sole English purpose dudes. to be kicked the living shit out of. Yeah, pretty much. Build your music gauge, go ape shit. Yeah, go ape shit. There'll be like a big boss on the side and sometimes the armies will move and take each other out and you'll have to defend an objective or attack an objective and, and do whatever. And you do that for 25 minutes and then you hear the victory music da, 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 do in this guitar form. 10,000 warriors. Yeah, you you truly are a warrior of the three kingdoms. I'm no Every time you kill a thousand and... Well... Have you got a thousand KO? Yes. Then you truly are a warrior of the three kingdoms. Um... But yeah, now in terms of Persona though, and the fact that they're doing it on this, like trying to keep with the idea that it's a Persona game that has Musu elements as opposed to the other way around. Mm. You go into combat, you whack a few dudes, combat's over. So it'd be like taking the Dynasty Warriors game, having the map open up, you walking up to the first set of enemies, hitting X a couple of times, and then the victory screen happening and then moving on. However, it works. It's weird to say that. It would sound like I was like denigrating the game a little bit, but no, it works. What I'm denigrating is my own bloody skill at the game, because here's here's the, the, the crux of it. Earlier on I was saying that in Persona 5 or SMT games, the whole weaknesses and strengths and affinities and all that business is important in the idea of planning moves turn after turn. Mm -hmm. In Strikers, you've got to deal with that in real time. And so, and thus, 
if you make a mistake while you're wailing on enemies and you don't notice a, an attack being telegraphed, it will punish you and it will fucking punish you hard. Yep. If you don't know, it's like... Yeah. Like I've, I've been... I've had two game overs already because I just didn't... I was just too busy wailing on enemies to not realise that a boss was charging up one of its big attacks and it clattered my whole party because we were all set up and it hit us for our weaknesses so it just destroyed us. Mm. Um, but once you go for him, the, the, the thing with Persona 5 as well is it's very stylistic pop pop e splats and you know, cell shaded chaos everywhere. It's a bit tough in a Musu game because now that's all distracting you from the fact that someone's casting Bufu from a mile away and you're weak to ice. Um, like, no. You, sir, so, are dead. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, it's fun. I'm liking it. I'm liking the story and the fact that it continues on. Even if it's a bit weird and it continues on directly from Persona 5 and not from its upgraded version, Persona 5 Royal, there is a character that you meet in Persona 5 Royal who is non-existent in Strikers. Because mm. they weren't in Persona 5, they were added to Royal. Ah. Um, but yeah, other than that, yeah, we've been doing fine. Been streaming, going through my journey through the Bithelverse, playing volume at the moment, mm. having fun, getting my ass kicked in stealth. And you notice I get my ass kicked a lot in this. So just a... mm. I, I, am an, I, I am more than happy to say that my skill level in most video games is average. You do really well in uh, rhythm games. Uh, yeah, compared but compared to others, again, it's 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 a sliding scale for that. So compared to others and the crazy spider fingers of other humans, I'm average. Hmm. Um, but yeah, no, that's on there. And um, in terms of, I know videos are, are there. Me and D are nearly at the end of Disco Elysium. Yeah, like hey. we've literally got one episode left. Just yeah. like my stone block. Be... Yeah, which still has one oh. episode. It was supposed to be done last week, but I was lazy. I believe you were explaining that, and then the power just won. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, you um, never finished it. Nope, I haven't logged in yet to uh, oh, complete so the we, final we quest. Need to do the uh, balance clay. There should be enough balance clay because I, uh, at one point, I did top up the balance clay again, emptied it, and topped it up again. Okay. <laughs> That's all right then. So, um, yeah, so speaking of that and the whole power cut thing, we were in the middle of talking about BlizzCon at the time, weren't we? And I was about yeah. to start talking about Metallica. Okay. Oh. And there was a story last week that had come up about Metallica playing their concert live during BlizzCon. And on Blizzard's official streams, that was fine. But on Twitch's own stream, which was co-streaming BlizzCon, they muted the Metallica performance and replaced it with generic 8-bit chiptune music in order to make sure that they did not fall foul of the DMCA. That's annoying. Um, and initially, and I was of the same opinion on this, initially I thought, oh, this is fucking ironic, Metallica. Metallica, the guys who brought the DMCA upon the world anyway due to their lawsuit with Napster, um, now having their own music blocked on a stream because of the thing that they went for. That's not entirely the case. Um, we always mention this, we're fans, you know, a lot of us are fans of Loading Ready Run. And they do a gaming news show called Checkpoint. Mm. And they explained this story and did a deep dive into it. And it's inherently not true that Metallica are the cause of the DMCA. Because the DMCA was brought into effect in 1998. And the lawsuit with Napster wasn't until 2001. So unless Metallica operate a time machine, they could not be solely responsible for the DMCA. What, what Metallica... DMCA? Uh, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, um, it's basically 
the the well the online copyright act that's used to determine you know correct use of music film and footage and stuff like that and that's and where the whole sure, fair use argument yeah to make sure people get paid for what they deserve royalties and stuff yeah um that's why uh, speaking of that uh d we managed to talk over that one song in the recent disco elysium episode so we didn't get a copyright claim for that what we did do is we got a copyright claim about one minute into the video where we were on the top of the antenna and we didn't say anything for 10 seconds because we were scanning a room to see if there was anything there so in preventing a copyright claim of one song we got a copyright claim for another instead i didn't even realize there was it's silence yeah it's uh it's uh yeah we made a point of we were sailing and like main character had a boom box and we had a laugh at that and but it was playing this like really long song by this uh, this you know by this band and they copyright claim all the stuff um it's in there it's automatically copies content id it's just how it is and to be fair it's their music and you know i mean you know there is the fair use argument but it only goes so far but still mm -hmm. yeah so so what metallica are actually responsible for is causing the shutdown of napster and bringing up the likes of livewire and kazar and all those file sharing sites that you got the viruses from and occasionally also games mm. Usually viruses. Yeah, yep. yeah. So just for like, give us a bit of a sort of a, an update on on that, and um, may put a I'll put a link in the description to the checkpoint episode where it come from because it's worth watching just to just to see how it is. Yeah, I, I remember we sort of off. On. I remember Metallica being the lead on shutting down Napster, but yeah, they mm -hmm. it started the line for the DMCA. Um, it's mm. just it. It was. It was. Yeah. It was. It was one of the first justifications of the DMCA. Yeah, that's that what had already been it. there three years prior. Yeah, they basically just said, "Look, music is getting stolen online. Ever since the internet yeah. became powerful enough to move files around at a decent rate, then." Do you remember? Do you remember what the song was that they went to court against Napster for? No, I do not. It was the theme to Mission Impossible Two. Um, it was the soundtrack. It was I Disappear. You know, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. And that's about as much as I can sing on that before I get hey, sued by Metallica. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um, yeah. It leaked. And the first they knew that it was leaked was when a radio station was playing the song while they were practicing. <laughs> Why were they listening to the radio while practicing? I don't know what well, they were just there, and you know, Lars Ulrich's just like, Hold on, that's our song. Where'd that work? Wait, what? Hold on, phone the record company. Did you do anything about that? No, what the? Yeah, yeah, it's just, but uh, yeah, so that was that was fun. So that's a, a bit of a, a wrap up of news from last week. Okay. Um, there's a couple of pieces of news that have come up one that Terry has put in, and another that I've got. We'll go with Terry's first. <laughs> no more, so, uh. Loading Simulator! Yeah, uh, Grand Theft Auto Online, i.e. Loading Simulator uh, 2021. We've all played GTA, haven't we, on various things, whether it's on the PS4 or 5 or Close 3. Great. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, and particularly in regards to the PC version, it just taking... Forever. Yeah. I think the um, I think it says six minutes it takes to load into some servers. That's what I said. Yeah. Which which when you're loading into time sensitive events, six minutes a race will have happened and your car wouldn't have even moved because you haven't loaded in yet. Yep. And then you know coming out, but um, according to this PC Gamer article that that Terry found, someone has figured out how to reduce GTA Online load times by almost seventy percent. So you'll only need to like wait, you know, an hour and uh, an hour, a minute and forty five seconds as opposed to like six minutes or what. Um yeah. it's a GitHub user Toaster CX um has uploaded fixed code. It's a proof of concept though and not intended for casual use according to the article though. Yeah, because it's it's basically you're modifying the game, which could be considered a cheat. 
yeah, so you shouldn't be doing it in GTA Online anyway. However, if it worked and fixed um, GTA's load times, nothing worse than trying to switch from Franklin to Michael and it taking 20 minutes because Michael's decided to just head to a bridge to contemplate his life choices while you weren't controlling it. Uh, no, no you, you still play or the game. You still have to play the game. Where's Trevor? Yeah. Oh, Where's Trevor is, was the greatest game. It was always great. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going around with Franklin and Michael and we're doing some stuff. Oh, right, I need to do a mission with Trevor. Let's see where he is. Oh, he's butt naked on a bridge. Yeah, he's passed out. Uh, no, oh, he's, in a trash um, bin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, in a, he's in a frock on an island. Pass out. <laughs> I mean, my best one oh, you... just zoomed into his trailer and it was just him. Arapo and nothing. There was nothing going on. Him just trying to flush a foot down the toilet. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just, just like, um, <sighs> oh, it's just like uh, talking about, uh, it, oh, it's like murdering like someone randomly. It's like, mm. in the weirdest of locations. Or getting kicked out of a bar. Oh, mm. many bars. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, switch into Trevor. And the fact that you're immediately in a fist fight because, well, it's Trevor. Yeah. Where well, Franklin's is like, he's in the house, he's washing his car. Or he's getting, he's getting rejected by Tanisha again. Yeah, or he's coming out of a strip club. Yeah. But yeah, so from that article, <laughs> it also says, he also says that the. Where was it? the Rockstar team should have been able to figure this one out? Oh, um, where was it? But he says a big part of it is most of it, most of the reason it takes so long is because the whole process is running on a single core instead of being optimized to run multiple cores. Uh, but, um, uh, it he basically says that. Uh, it shouldn't take the devs more than a day to have solved this. They should have been on it. And also that they probably won't, even though that he's already sort of fixed it in some ways, they probably won't even implement it because people are so used to the loading screen simulator. Yeah, it's like, oh, we'll, we'll load up GTA Online, I'll just go make a brew. Yep. Or as when they said, back, look up guides on how to make money on GTA Five. <laughs> Me, I'll be just like thinking, right, when I load in, please tell me I logged out inside my apartment. <laughs> the right yeah. apartment that oh. has my vehicles? Yep. Yeah. And that, that I haven't joined a public server with like a hacker. Know, 20 Russian hackers and infinite rocket launchers. Or you log in, all of a sudden you teleport to a new location and you're in a cage. Yep, that can be a thing. I remember one like not loaded. It's like one of the it was. Uh, I think it's for the for the diamond heist, isn't it? That you got the um, or the diamond casino heist, where you have to like start the heist from an arcade. Yeah. And definitely remember like dying on the way to that and spawning inside the unloaded map of the arcade. I remember that. And it was yeah. like a. Almost like an invisible uh, maze. You had to try to find your way through the building. Yeah. yeah. Because if you then walked the wrong place, you would fall through. The no, there was that like that... solid walls and stuff for me. Uh, no, I remember going up a set of stairs that weren't a set of stairs and fell through the world. And because it's GTA, you fall through the world and then end up in the sky again and yeah, end up on a beach. I mean, that was fine because it got me out. Was one I stuck like Terry was. Uh, Tayo is a f little fun GTA thing. Whenever you do the bar fight, mm. the AI always steals your helicopter or vehicle and runs off with it. Uh, and then you, the day when could... you have to chase them down or else you don't finish the event either. Mm. So <laughs> it's just like, it's just like, god damn it. It's like, <laughs> I've parked my car here. Go beat up the, the guys. And it flies. Steph was, I think, Steph or Sapphire was with me. They just ended up off the map dying. Just like, where are you taking me? 
Uh, I'm still in the thingy. It's the AA that stole it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there was, um, before I actually look at the other piece of news, there was one that Steph had put last week as well um, for Magic the Gathering. Wizards are just collaborating everywhere and are adding or going to be like doing secret lairs involving Warhammer 40k and Lord of the Rings. Oh. Um, that'll be in addition to the secret lair they did last year, which um, was Walking Dead. Oh. They had a crossover of Walking Dead cards. So they, they have these things called secret lairs and they're just sort of like self contained cards for, for play, but you know, sometimes they can use the. They've even done one where you can do D and D. Is it fact, like? Is it like when they do like the unhinged and un- thingy that? In, in in a sense, yeah. But um, but sort of rather than just jokey cards, they are playable cards. They're just based on various different franchises, usually for charity stuff that they've they've been doing that. But uh, it's also them trying to get into doing some inclusivity sort of stuff as well because. Wizards had a poor run of form involving the fact that in a lot of the companion content, Chandra mm. is okay. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Chandra's a lesbian. Uh, Woo! Um, That's however, new. however, they wrote it. They sort of wrote it out of the books because they were marketing in China and Russia. And are you getting where I'm getting at here? Yeah, where she can't. Everywhere where it's illegal and it's very, very bad. They'll ban, yeah. they'll ban your product just because of something simple like that. Yeah. So, so does, uh... Wizards have been trying to get the goodwill back regarding that, and they have just turned around and said, in those countries, I'm sorry, you're not going to get the full magic experience because these characters are what they are, and that's that's mm. how it is. And, you know, if you want someone to blame, blame your governments. That political bit of broadcasting was from Ryan and the Immaterial Gamers Foundation. <laughs> the Immaterial Foundation is not a real foundation, and so please don't complain to us. Please complain to the Immaterial Gamers Twitter instead. Please, it could do with the uh, exposure. It could use some li- lividity. Lividity. Yeah. It could use, it could use anything. Um, what else have we got? Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want to quickly talk about the World of Warcraft thing before I talk about Anthem, Terry? Sure. Um, I just stumbled upon this a few minutes ago actually that because they're bringing out the burning crusade expansion patch basically putting burning crusade into a classic experience Mm -hmm. um so that people can play the burning crusade all over again which is i think the second expansion uh burning crusade was the first wasn't it so you had classic yeah sorry first yeah the first expansion so their second second game of world of warcraft Uh, like phase. Yeah. So you'd go through the classic, then you'd go to Burning Crusade, which is actually when I started playing World of Warcraft originally. I most um, of them did. I think a lot of you guys Burning started. Crusade. I think you guys started. Burning Crusade. Beginning yeah. of Blitzkrieg. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of you guys Somewhere started. Time. Yeah. Um, I play. Actually, believe it or not, I think I've said this on other podcasts, but. I actually played the World of Warcraft beta before it was fully released. Um, and me and my friends had access to it, and we played it. They had a European access. We didn't actually have Canadian access. Like, there was no North American access. It was a European account. Um, but we all played, and I didn't like it back then. So I didn't play when the first when the game first released. I didn't like the whole idea that you buy the game and then you got to pay for time that that really mm. rubbed me the wrong way but i eventually no. got loosened up to the idea and in the burning crusade eras i think is when i started maybe just before burning crusade came out i still have the boxes somewhere of all the never ending mm. cds to install the game because that was before you really downloaded right. games yeah, there wasn't Blu-ray and there wasn't... Um... Well, computers barely run... I don't know any computer that runs Blu-ray, really. Um, well, not Blu-ray, but I mean DVD or whatever it is. Yeah, it was all CDs back then. It wasn't CDs, oh. it wasn't it wasn't DVD content, it was CDs. God, but... Remember the battle chest? Yeah. <laughs> but, the battle... under the... I don't know what I, I was actually 
trying to talk about is currently there's more than 1,300 people that have signed up to do this fresh uh, leveling experience for the upcoming Burning Crusade expansion. Mm. Um, it looks like they want to move... They're going to start brand new characters on a random server that's yet to be determined in the European realms because they don't... For a fresh server, they said. Um... Yeah, they don't want a server that's uh, flooded with high ma- like high amounts of gold and all that stuff. They want to... Yeah, basically. They want a fresh start and they're looking to hit 2,000 uh, people by Friday. This <laughs> Friday coming up. I don't know when this expansion is actually coming out, but... It doesn't have a date yet. It was only just announced last week, so it's... Yeah, which is weird Blizzard, because... It's soon. Uh, unless they're all just... I don't get it. Like They said the event is due to go live on March 5th. So I think their idea is that they're giving themselves enough time to level up... Oh, to get to the hot... Through, through vanilla and then... But what's to stop people from finding out what server this is and just transferring characters to it? They could... Well, I actually, yeah. if I'm not mistaken... Well, no, because if it's a dead server, a lot of those servers have free transfers too, which is the scarier part. Uh, um... So I, I guess I, they might keep it sort of a secret. They might not advertise what server they're going to. They might only advertise to the people that they're that sign up for it. So... I, I kind of wish, a... I kind of wish, um, seeing as I'm just starting to level, I kind of wish I had heard about this. I would have joined them. Yeah, and probably would have just got a few of us sitting there crowding around waiting for Hogger. Yeah. Uh, I don't miss that. I don't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm yeah. Sorry, if anyone, right, if anyone can truly come to me and say that they enjoyed waiting around to hope that you got the first hit in on Hogger, regardless of whether you were in a group or not. It, you see, it, it makes me... Right, there are some design decisions that Blizzard have done in regards to the newer content, which people could say have been dumbed down and stuff like that. Yeah. Stuff that I'd say have been good for um, Blizzard in terms of design is quest mobs that basically cannot get tapped so mm. anyone has a chance of taking them on, so there isn't just a queue of people, you know, an orderly line of people taking on, you know, mobs. Yeah. Party sync is also something that they should have done ages ago, and RPGs have done before them. And there's sort of, I mean, I guess the, the thing with Blizzard on that, and the better thing that they've done is that they reset all the quests around there as well, so you can redo them. So that's the idea of you know sort of being able to level with people at that level, yet you're still able to on your own go at your own pace. Yeah, that's one of my yeah. favorite things because like like I said, I just joined back, and you guys were all max level. I had nothing max level, um, and so that, that that led to two situations: and either like get a boost token and level up another character, or just party sync down with a character that you're already comfortable with. Yeah, and. So yes, Chiz, you are correct. Um, it, basically, there's basically telling everybody to come to uh, their Discord server to figure out where they're going to go and all that. And mm-hmm. the Crusade Classic doesn't have a firm release date yet, but uh, it's coming sometime this year, apparently. So you're correct. It's yeah. not coming out anytime soon. They're just trying to yeah. get a head start on it because they want to be max yeah. level for it. Get everyone there, do that, and then they can go off to their own realms and stuff like that. And then they could probably do. I mean, if it's going to go, if they're doing the classic thing, they're probably going to do the classic events leading up to the Burning Crusade. So they're going to do the whole Open in the Dark Portal event again, aren't they? So. Yeah. Which will be interesting. Maybe seeing that a second time. In fact, I'm actually wondering on that. If they would have redone the opening of the Temple of Ankaraj as well, that would have been. Mm. Interesting to do, but we'll we'll see how it goes. So there is one last story regarding Anthem, and I believe I put it in our Discord. Oh, what? Under the... 
under the under the quote of Anthem Next, more like Anthem Never. Oh. So uh, yeah, so 2018, back it. in the day. Do you remember Darius? You, me, and Steph were so excited about this Bioware game that was also done by EA, but we could forgive that bit. You know, that it was it was going to be the Destiny Killer. It was going to be a looter shooter, and you'd be able to fly around in yeah. badass mechs and 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 take on um, you know otherworldly creatures in a hostile alien environment. And there'd be these cataclysms that would change the world permanently as we knew it. We also played Anthem. Yes, mm. we did. <laughs> <laughs> not as much as other games, but no, so definitely not as much as Destiny. On. Yeah, definitely not as much as Destiny, and we haven't played as much Destiny as we would like to have played. Um, I find yeah. Destiny a bit too. Thing in the expansions, like. You've added like five quests for like thirty. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, now that now that Bungie are not part of Activision again, they've sort of changed that a little bit. It's got better, mm. but it's still got the signs of because this is the thing. This is stuff that they've designed two years ahead of time, and they only left Activision like two thousand nineteen, so they're only just clearing out the stuff that they designed mm. sort of before. But yeah, what we were hoping on with this really disappointing launch, I mean, it was a great fundamental of a game, but it was literally foundation level stuff that was implemented into Act 1 of a supposed three-act season pass style roadmap structure of a live service. I can't help but being acting like James Stephanie Sterling get that point of live service. Just saying it as sneeringly as possible and triple A. Um, but yeah, so at the end of the day, BioWare said, right, we're not going to carry on with that roadmap. It's clear that that's not going to work. We need to improve on this. Yeah. We need to rebuild the game from the ground up. So we're going to do an Anthem 2.0. There was a lot of problems with the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I was saying. There was a great foundation. Yes. We but there was not enough to support a live yeah. service. So, so yeah, Anthem 2.0 or Anthem Next, as it was internally known. Eighteen months later. Yeah, I was going to say it almost more than a year ago they introduced the idea of it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Eight, Eighteen months later, EA got in there, spoke to Bioware, and so we we're going to decide in the next week whether this is going to be a thing or not. And yeah, last weekend, nope cancelled the redesign scrapped um, thought about it a year ago <laughs> yeah it should have yeah yeah note on this that they were still selling the game at deep discount to people so that they could be ready for this relaunch of this game well now you you okay it's 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 a game that's worth 5 to 10 quid because there's only 5 to 10 quid worth of game in it but Look, I fucking sat there and played that on Origin Premium at 15 quid a month. Yeah, fool on me. <laughs> Hoping that they would improve that game and do stuff. Did they do it? Did they bollocks? EA just... Getting in the way of Bioware, who already had troublesome things. And if anyone says Bioware magic to me again when it comes to their development style, I will slap them. Bioware magic. Get here, Terry. Get a flight over here now. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can... Ah! Because, um, you know, again, we can all talk about like abusive workplace structure and stuff like that and crunch and all that business being talked about well before. I mean, the, the, speaking of Checkpoint, there was also a discussion that was like, oh, yes, this was reported about Anthem by uh, Kotaku's Jason Scryer. Um, well, Bloomberg's Jason Scryer has now reported that it's cancelled. Yeah, so in the time that it took for them to launch Anthem Next and cancel it, journalist Jason Scryer has switched jobs. I you know, has worked for a business magazine, you know, as opposed to a game magazine. But uh, hi, Sapphire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's disappointing. Now, however, good news for people who were looking forward to Dragon Age Four, Steph. Um, 
they've moved everyone from the Anthem Next project onto Dragon Dragon Age 4 and have also stated that it is more than likely going to be a purely single-player experience. Well, it just means if they moved everything from Anthem, then it's going to be a flop too. There you go. Perfect. Uh, Well, they've also moved them onto the next Mass Effect game. That's not the Mass Effect remaster that's coming out in May, which may be some, that'll be some, probably some RPN fodder. Uh, Go back through that again in Remastered Glory and basically see Miranda's arse. Um, Oh no, we won't. They got rid of that. Um, Rid of Miranda's butt. The Adventures of Fem Shep will The only butt that needs to be involved in this is Stefan's. (laughs) Stefan's broken bum. <laughs> so um yes yeah, so I think that's 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 all the sort of news that yeah. that's happened over the week. We've talked about our games. We're running at an hour and 6 minutes 10 seconds. 15. I guess we're going to start uh wrapping up. Yeah. Uh, and do the like share subscribe and listen to if you're listening to it. Listen to it on yeah. Apple and Spotify and all the other like come send us a message. Services. Email us. Follow- all that jazz. You can yeah, follow wherever. us. Yeah, we're, on, we're, on, we're on everything. On the YouTube, subscribe. On the podcast services, subscribe. We're on Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio for that one follow. episode again still. I keep making that joke. Um, the Yeah, follow. give us a follow on the Twitch channel. We stream at least twice a week. Yeah, because well, three we're, usually. We're doing, we're doing one day. Yeah, we yeah, two, been, three times a week. We do three now because we've been doing these live podcasts. Then you do one, and yeah. I almost always do at least yeah. one. Yeah, so that's three. So so, uh, the, the live podcast is now becoming a thing. It looks like it. uh, it's looking like it. It works yeah, out be because honest, I'm it, around. Take some of the slack off it, of uh, Ryan. Yeah, you know what? It's it's easier to fucking edit as well. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just export this straight onto YouTube. That's where we got Boom. the intro and outro on the end. That's that sorted. And all I got to do to do the audio edit is put it in, put the video into Audacity and re uh, re export it as an MP3. Boom. Perfect. Oh, it turns it turns it turns an hour job into a ten minute job. It's great. There you go. And you got um, enough on your plate, anyways. So yeah, you know what we haven't done in a while. We haven't done the video schedule. Of how how our things work. So if you are still listening, congrats, you're still here. Yeah. But hi, Martin. Um, don't worry about that. We it's can't see a... him in the video, so no, no, no. A snore happened. Oh, <laughs> it, it shit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the middle of going. I was in the middle of going through with it, just like a. <sighs> like, he's he's tired. It's it's fine. But yeah, so we do videos. Pretty much every single day of the week. So on Monday we have Better Together, which is Duncan and Andrea playing some long form game. At the moment they're playing Persona Five. Hmm. They're playing Royal Darius. Be careful, spoilers. Um, but they're they're going to be going. That's a hundred and fifty hour game. They're going to be going for. They're only on yes. episode twenty one. They're going to be going for the next two years. No, they're not, because they're also on Thursday as well, editing possible, or where possible, two times a week. They'll be doing that Tuesday. The VOD of the podcast comes out, if you missed it today. Um, Wednesday is going rogue at the moment, which is me going through some roguelike games, uh, back going through Void Bastards. Still not lost me third agent out of ten yet, third client out of ten, so that's all good. Thursday, like we said, better together but it is also the live stream dump so all the vods of the previous week will end up out on that day as well mm. uh friday is currently the immaterial gamers fantasy league but would also be where the the live stream dump would be happening if you know that's going we're near the end of that now we've got two weeks of main play left and then we get rid of three of us and we move on to the playoffs and so. it looks like i'm gonna go down and Hey, I'll be joining you at this rate, mate. Yeah. Uh, so that'll, that'll, that'll be a fun one. Um, Saturday is play session where we just 
whatever we want to play, usually party games or multiplayer stuff. Sometimes we do some cooperative stuff. Sometimes we just sit there and watch Steph play for a point-and-click puzzle game and see if he'll figure out the puzzle. Hmm. That's led to some gaps. <laughs> We're getting back through the room because he, he he likes those games. Yep. Um, I I suggested them to him and he does enjoy them. We just don't play it nearly often enough. Maybe even there's something to do as a live stream just to catch up and get them through. Um, and then Sunday is RPN. Um, used to stand for only currently still does stand for role playing, not Ima games, but it ended up being role playing Nel two games as well because we're co going through that and. That's the finale of Disco Elysium will be happening, so we'll have to find another RPG to play. Uh, currently got an idea at one point, when it bothers coming out, of looking at getting um, League of Legends Ruined King, which mm-hmm. is the sort of a, the game by the guys who made Battle Crashers Night War, and it uses the same systems in there, so that'll be pretty cool to play. But it's not out yet, so we'll have to find something to play in the middle of it. Um, I keep saying, I keep joking and saying that we'll play Mass Effect Andromeda. I don't know if I'm being serious or not. Hmm. Every time I keep going, oh yeah, we'll do Mass Effect Andromeda, I find any other RPG. That's okay. It's sort of like <laughs> how I keep saying, oh, we should do Portal 2 co- uh, co-op campaigns again. <laughs> and I think I installed it, but I don't think we've ever got anywhere close to even launching it. No. I, I, I said if you wanted to. Yeah. You, um, should, you, went, you should uh, do one. Copilot one. Do it as a stream. Yeah. I'll need to like be learning I should I keep promising I'll say this, but I'll start learning how to use OBS Ninja. Because if you need a director for that, I could probably do that or produce. What's OBS Ninja? It's a way of capturing multiple people's like webcams and gameplay footage and putting it into one big screen that you can export into OBS to then stream out to people. Oh, that that would definitely be useful. Yeah, but um, uh, there's a lot of like cogs and in all fairness, and that need to... as long as I'm doing it with like one person, because it's only going to be two people, um, I could probably do it just through Discord, because I believe if you are live streaming and you have your camera open, it just moves the camera down to the bottom corner, and then I can capture their live stream, mm-hmm. and it's reasonably close to the same to the live yeah sort of like what we were doing in minecraft where i'd capture someone else's screen just to put it at the bottom just to show what the other person's doing mm. so that's yeah that's the thing but i'll like we'll work on that next couple of next couple of like days weeks or whatever i'll go back into obs ninja and I'll just show people how it works and i'll need to grab their links so we can grab their bits and pieces anyway yeah but uh yeah we'll do that right so we have talked on for way too long an hour and 15 minutes. That's one of our longest podcasts. Yeah, for a while. So, um, a while. yeah. Well, right, have a good night, everyone. Uh, this will be out on the VOD tomorrow. And uh, we will see you next time. Bye! Yep, Toodaloo! All right, there we go. Outro's done and everything. Sure. Yeah. No, no. I had I had you guys muted, so it didn't matter. So. I I wish I wish it would have shown, like what Chiz was doing, trying to keep warm with the fire <laughs> the whole in the background of the outro. That would have been perfect, but it definitely didn't. So that's why I think I made the joke early when I can use that as a screen grab. Yeah. Actually, uh, was, I don't think it was in the video. <gasps> I think he did it before the video uh, started. Ah, uh, D, D, D's just like I can oh, finally eat. Finished. I can eat on camera. All right, I gotta get Number. running. Um, yeah, I was... I've got to get off as well. I've got work tomorrow. So does oh, Darius, Number. if I'm not mistaken. I do. He stayed up late for us, an hour late. I did. Thank you very oh, much, oh, Darius. Thank you very much. All right. Don't we'll worry. be back. Okay, so I'll catch you later. Hi, I'll catch you later, everyone. Bye-bye.